and everyone. As you find your seats again, we're going to start in our message time this morning. And uh, it always amazes me. I'm such to Joyce. See, Joyce always called me crazy. I want to call Joyce crazy all the time. Anyways, uh, this morning, though, when, as I, when we sit down, when Maddie and I sit down, this morning there's hardly anybody behind us. And then, then all of a sudden, as I get up here, there's more.
the out, out in the world, or when I meet someone on this, uh, outside in, in business, when I have a conversation with them. Prayer is simply a conversation with our Father. It's building relationships. He's not someone that's just this abstract concept. This, he's not someone who's just this, just this, this uh, super uh, uh, natural thing out there, or philosophical thought. He's a person who wants to build a relationship with you and I. Prayer is a, is a vital, part, important part of our relationship with God. It's like um, when we think about the radio and television in, in the world. Uh, all around us are radio and television signals going up, aren't there? And if all we need to do to find out what's, what, what's going on, on in, those, uh, in those telecasts or those broadcasts is to simply t plug in a cable today. It used to be that you just had to adjust the rabbit ears properly, right? On the TV, if you know what I'm talking about. Antennas, right? I don't know if, you, if you, some of you probably have never even seen antennas on a television. But uh, I, there was times when I was young, we, we'd have to, I, you know, I, if we were trying to watch the hockey game, hockey night in Canada, my dad or, or mom would send us up the TV and say, hey, go, you got to go adjust the, the, so we can get, get that tuned in a little better. And then you'd get it, and then you'd let go, and it, you'd get it perfectly tuned in, and then you'd let go, and it would go away again. So your, you know, dad, or my dad would say, okay, go stand there and adjust it again. He said, don't move. <laughs> it's perfect. Basically, what prayer is, is it's tuning us into God. It's allowing us to build closer to, to, in our walk with Him. It's allowing us to be deeper in our in fellowship with Him, in communion with Him, in, in relation with Him. Prayer is so vitally important. It's where we get connected to God. It's kind of like when we think about a car that uh, um, it has a battery in it, right? The battery is where what, what allows the car to run. Now, if you, allow, if you disconnect the battery, you can't start the car, you can't listen to the radio, you can't uh, plug in your cell phone, you can't, uh, you can't uh, drive it. Well, you could try to drive it for a little while if you manage to get it started without uh, with just a little bit of power in it. But if you just never, if you never allow it to get connected to the, what, the alternator, or my, earlier in my life, the generator, it has no power. It can't continue to work. So prayer, or our lives, need to be connected to God. In order for us to build, uh, to have that power, to have that ability to be able to, to have the strength to meet the challenges that we face in our lives these days. Which are, we have challenges on every side of us. You know, my, my prayer journey has been very interesting. When I first became a Christian, it was very simple. It was like, Lord, I need you to do this. Lord, I need a new Ferrari. Lord, I need a bigger house. I need this, I need that, I need all these things. Prayer was more of a, of a, a gimme kind of thing than it was a relationship. And it tended to be that I was more interested in what God could do for me than what I could do for God. But that's not really a relationship, is it? If we want to have a strong relationship with God, if we want to have a strong relationship with anybody, it's not about what I'm going to get all the time, it's what, we, what, I, what I'm also putting into the relationship. It's listening. It's hearing from Him. It's hearing from, from our friends. It's hearing from that. That's what relationship is all about. If you turn with me into, into your Bibles, if you have them with this morning, uh, I want to look at in James chapter 5 this morning, in verses 13 down through verses 18, or I'm going to read all the way through to verse 20 of this chapter. And it's a, it's a great, great passage, and uh, it talks a lot about prayer and how it can affect our lives. Now this morning I read from the, from the Christian Standard Bible, or the Holman Christian Standard, most of you will read from the New International Version, and I want to challenge you with this. Cam and I were talking about this last week, and I know the church works mainly in the NIV, but what I want to challenge you with is to be able to look at your NIV and also hear from what, what the Holman Christian Standard has. Maybe you might uh, use New American Standard or anything, but I want to encourage you to look at other, see, hear how other Bibles uh, might uh, say it, just so we get a clearer picture. It's, it's a good, healthy way of looking at it. But in verse 13, I read, it says, Is anyone among you suffering? He should pray. Is anyone cheerful? He should sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? He should call for the elders of the church, and they should pray over him and anoint him with, with olive oil in the name of the Lord. 
And listen to this. The prayer of, of faith will save the sick person, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he commi is, has committed sins, he'll be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The intense prayer, the intense prayer of a righteous, of the righteous is, a very, is, very, is very, very powerful. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, yet he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And for three years and six months, it didn't even rain in the land. Can you imagine that? Three years and six months, not a drop of rain, which we could really use right now. We don't need any rain when we're putting a new roof on the building, right? Then, verse 18, it says, he prayed again. And the sky gave, way, gave rain, and the land produced its fruit. My brothers, if any among you stray from the truth, and someone turns him back, he should know what, who, that whoever turns a sinner from error of his way will save his life from death and a cover and, the, and cover a multitude of sins. Prayer is so so very important. You know, many of us, and I, I feel like I'm tired here, so I'm going to be moving. <laughs> so I'm going to make Lincoln work a little harder with him because he's videotaping. <laughs> But you know, when we look at this, in the first couple of verses, verses 13 and 14, in these two verses here, we see a call to pray. Is anyone who's suffering, he should pray. Is anyone cheerful, he should sing praises. Is anyone among you sick, he should call for the elders of the church, and they should pray over him, after anointing him with all the oil in the name of the Lord. Now, we, need, we have a call to pray. We need to be willing and, and able to stand up and, at, and talk to the Father at any time during, during the day. We're told in Scripture that, that we should be, Paul tells us we should pray without ceasing. We should be in constant, uh, constant connection with, with our Father. So many, so often though, we get into trouble and we, we forget that's what, that He's there for us to help, to help us. We forget to talk to the Father. We forget to, to turn things over to Him. We turn inward. We turn to ourselves. We, we struggle. We allow, we allow the world to direct us in how we should deal with things. But God tells us, I'm here for you all the time. I'm here to be with you no matter what you might face. You know, I find, even in my, in, in my time, because even in preparing today, because I changed my, my way of preparing, I'll do, this is all my notes today. I usually have nine pages of notes. But I was, I was under conviction that I want to, when I look at my notes and struggle and, and pay attention only to my notes, I'm not connecting with, it, with anybody else. But then as I'm preparing to do this, I'm going, oh, I'm starting to get stressed. Even this morning I had an upset stomach and I was like, a little uh, uptight about it all. And then I thought, I'm sitting there reading through my notes and, my, and, and from my study time and everything. I'm going, okay, this is what we need to talk about in prayer. And this is what I need to do when I'm in prayer. Um, and do this section. And this is what I try to, I've got to try to remember. This is the scripture I've got to try to remember here. And, then, and so forth. And going on and on. And then I'm thinking, oh, but I'm so stressed out. What I, I, need to, I should carry all my notes into there. I need to carry all my all the study I've done. And, and, and you know, and, 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 and I'm getting more uptight and more uptight and more uptight. And then I go, wait a minute, I'm talking about prayer. Why aren't they praying about this? Isn't this silly? We know what we, we should be doing. We know that we're, we, should be, we should be turning to God. We know that in our times of, 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 of strain and, and, and pressure, when we get ready for final exams, there's been lots of times I sit down uh, in, in school and I would go, okay, Lord, I pray, I, I, I've studied, uh, I've worked hard here, I, I, I've done all this thing, and I'm all stressed out, what's the problem? And then I realized, wait a minute, I just need to trust God here. And when I finally started to do that, my grades changed. When I, my first year, two years of school, my grade point average was 0.65. I think I told you that, haven't I? 0.65 on a four scale. That's not great. It took me four semesters to get off academic probation when I started to turn my grades around. And I didn't have a grade below B, so not a grade below three on a four scale when I finally got my head, 
of wrapped around who's in control. When I realized that it wasn't me that was doing the work, it wasn't me who was doing the preparation, it wasn't me who was who, who needed to get me through this. It was when I realized it was God and I needed to, to, to turn it over to Him and allow Him to work in my life and, and call to Him and to just say, Lord, it's all you. I can't do this. I can't, I can't perform. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I can't, my memory is too short. Because you, you, you just have to know that. It's going to take you probably half a year to remember all your names. And then I'll probably have to ask you next year again what your name is. Because I, I, I seem to have such a struggle with memory. But what I, what I found amazing was, I could, when I turned things over to God, just in the, I, in the example of my exams, when I said, Lord, I called out to Him, I, I said, Lord, I trust you for this. There was times when, when, I, when I had a professor that wanted everything verbatim. Whatever he said in class, whatever he said, whatever he, he took notes very intensely. And, you, and he said, uh, now I want you to remember this verbatim. You, want, you were ready because he was gonna, that meant that I was going to be on the test. And he wanted exactly how he said it. And so I sat down and, I, and I, in that first class I studied hard. And I, but I said, Lord, help me remember. And I never got below a four in that class. The only reason I got a three in the class is I didn't like doing the reading. And I failed the pop quizzes. <laughs> but you know, that was my fault. But anyways, but do you see the difference though? My, when I first started school, it was all about me. I was going to be the next Billy Graham. I was going to be the next uh, uh, Charles Spurgeon. I was going to be the next great minister in North America. And I, everyone was going to flock to hear me preach. But it was all about me. It wasn't about God. It wasn't about our, my relationship with Him. I had to realize I needed to walk with Him and trust Him and continually hear that call to pray and pray without ceasing. And then we go on, if we go on in this passage here, we look at verses 15 and 16, we see the, the results of prayer. It says, the prayer of faith will have will will save the sick person. Now I want you to realize that when we're talking about sick and up in verse 13 about suffering, if we look at the Greek in this section of the scripture, it's not just talking about just the physical sickness or illness, although it does include that. The way the word, the Greek word is it is in the section of scripture also includes any weakness, any struggle, any battle that we're facing. So in other words, when we look at this, when we talk when it talks about the sick or the suffering, we can include our our struggles, our our battles that we're facing, whether we're sick or whether it's health issues, maybe it's other issues. Maybe it's issues with that we're dealing with pornography. Maybe it's issues that we're dealing with, with greed. Maybe it's issues that we're dealing with uh, with with questioning uh, um, our our God's authority or whatever it might be. Whatever our weakness is. Whatever it is we're struggling with, we turn to prayer and turn things over to God and trust God. He'll turn things around for us and help us deal with those things. We'll see healing in our lives. We'll see freedom from bondage. We'll see freedom from bondage of, of greed or sickness or health or, or all these other things that we, we might be struggling with, our weaknesses. But we need to turn them over. It's building a relationship with God. It's trusting Him. It's turning over our things, over the things that we're dealing with, over to Him. It's interesting, though, what it says here. It's, it, in this section of Scripture, it tells us that we need to, to, to allow us to go to the church, to, to come to before each other, to turn things over to one another, and, tr and trust Him. Not only do we do we look at uh, we do, we go inward and. and, and we also rely on the fellowship and community of the believers around us. It's not just just uh, going it alone. We never should feel alone. When we're part of the of the community of Christ. We're part of a church that loves us, a, a body. We're never fighting alone. It's like the I, I always love the Coke and Pe or I think it's the Coke commercials where they have the hand or the or the hand with just the tongue, just wandering around, or the and the eyeball. And, and, you know, they can't go it alone. Because the tongue is saying, oh, this is great. And it's really cold here. And the eyeballs are mocking them, right? And, but what's funny is the brain comes and, to, and tells them that he's going to make them eat dirt, right? The tongue. And he's going to make the, the eyeball where the, the, the 
onion sombrero. I think it's funny. <laughs> Just me. But the reality is, in that, that's a great picture of who we are as believers in the church. We need one another. We can't go it alone. We need to be willing, when we're struggling, to come and let us know that how do we be praying for you. We need to be more willing to go to the community to call, and, and there we'll see results. The results of prayer is healing. The results of prayer is the forgiveness of sins. The results of prayer is, the, is a joining together, is a building of, 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 the, of the body. The result of prayer is a changed person. <clears throat> There's been so many times in my life that when I try to do both things alone, I struggle, I fail, I make, I make a mess of things. But when I turn to the body and I turn to God and, and together we pray about things, we see a change in, in, in the world around us. We see results. We see the world changing around us, all, all around us. Interesting thing about Jasper Place Church. When we joined uh, Lighthouse Baptist Ministries, which I was pastoring in Jasper Place Baptist Church together, we began just to pray together. We began with prayer meeting on Tuesday nights. And what we've seen is an amazing thing. The church never advertised. They didn't send out flyers. They didn't do any of those kind of things that we, the world tells us we should do to be successful in, uh, to build the church. But what, they, what we did see was the church grow. The church, when, when, they, when Pastor Jonathan Chisholm came to the church, was about 20 people. And then we were led to, to join Jack, uh, Lighthouse Baptist Church or Lighthouse Baptist Ministry with Jasper Place. And we had 40. And then the interesting thing happened. All of a sudden we realized that every week the church was growing. Every week we saw new people. Every week we saw uh, uh, those coming and, and, and coming forward at the end of the close of the service to, for prayer, for salvation. For church membership. The church all of a sudden in, in June of last year went from 20 to now they run between 70 and 90 on a Sunday morning. Why? Because they trusted God. Because they came together in prayer. They came together and, and, and sought the Lord. They didn't try to do it alone. They didn't try to do it in their power, in their understanding, in their abilities. They trusted God. <coughs> Which we, as a church, I think we need to start to begin to, to, to look at. And But then you might be saying to yourself, well, you know, I'm not that great a spokesperson. I'm not that great a, a, a orator. I'm not that great a, uh, at praying. I'm not that great at doing all these things. Well, James does an interesting thing in this passage of Scripture. In the last couple of verses, verses 17 and 18, we see here the example of prayer. It says, Elijah... Was a, was a man with a nature like ours. Now, what was, who was Elijah? He was a prophet of Israel. He stood up against the, the prophet or the priests of Baal, and he was willing to stand and be all alone. There was the hundreds of priests the, of, this, of this cult all around him, but he was willing to stand up and be, and, and be counted for God. Now there's times in our lives that we're willing to stand up. We're willing to, to stand up for what's right. We're willing to do what God, what we sense God's called us to do. But then, with Elijah on the other hand, in a moment of melancholy and depression and struggle, what does he do? He flees. He hides in the countryside. He's afraid of Jezebel because she just seems to get what she wants. And does what she pleases. She's the queen, and she gets just gets does whatever whatever she, whatever her mind desires her has a desire to. So Elijah, not much different than us, really is he? One minute he can be standing on a mountaintop, and the next minute he's in the depths of depression and struggling. You and I have times when we're just flying, we're feeling great, worship's fantastic. Um, things are going perfect in our lives. We've got the perfect job. We get the, all those things going going right. But then there's the times that we struggle. For our, for myself, there was there was times in my ministry and when I was in Saskatoon at Faith Baptist Church, we saw the church grow. We were baptizing people. We were having all kinds of wonderful success. And then all of a sudden, things turned around, and the church fell. Partly problem, I'm sure, for my fault, as part of my fault, or my error, 
or because of what we saw other people do and things like that, but that can happen within church. So I went from being way up here, feeling like I could conquer the world, doing what I could preach whatever I wanted to, I could say what I wanted to, I could do whatever God seemed to be directing me to do, down to the bottom. Feeling like the world is crushing me. Now I could have just said there, I quit. And I almost did. Seven years we struggled. Or I struggled. My wife watched me struggle. Seven years I felt like I was in the desert. Struggling and not knowing where to go, what to do. I felt like walls were being built up around me. No one wanted to talk to me. No one wanted to have anything to do with me. And then all of a sudden, I realized. Since God called me back to pray. I sense God called me back to doing what I knew was right, and that was to build my relationship back with Him. I was so worried about what the world was thinking and what the world thought of me and how I, they saw me maybe fail as a pastor, how they saw me fail in, in my ministry, and, and I was so worried about all those things, yet God still loved me. He was calling me back to Him. And when I finally got that understanding, what did I do? I prayed. I prayed with myself, I prayed with my wife, and a few other key people that, that were really close to us. I called on the elders of the church, so to speak, to pray with us. And what a difference that made. All of a sudden, I enjoyed going to church again. You know, can you imagine a pastor not enjoying going to church? Can you imagine a pastor not enjoying standing up and preaching? All of a sudden, God got that, put that spark back in my heart. And then I started to put my, my resume up. And that's a year ago. And uh, I thought, well, this should take a couple weeks and I should be pastoring the church again. <laughs> Didn't happen that way. It took a year. But I'm back where God wants me to be. Trusting Him. Turning to Him and allowing Him to work every step of the way. Not going it alone. Not trying to be the hero. Not trying to do all the work. Not trying to be the one who everyone is, you know, puts up on a pedestal. I just want to be one of His faithful servants. Trusting Him. Believing in Him. Walking with Him. Communing with Him. And where does that all begin? In prayer. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about prayer. In fact, we're probably going to do one service that's just going to be all praying, praying together. And we're going to do some different things that you might not be used to, but that's okay because sometimes we need to be challenged and be taken outside of our comfort zone. We're going to pray together. We're going to pray as, as maybe couples, as friends. We're going to pray together and do all these kinds of different things. But I want us to just to be able to understand that how important prayer is as a church and as individuals. You see, what Elijah did here was amazing. Can you imagine praying for, for the rain to stop and it's not raining for three and a half years? I just, I mean, to me, that's just amazing. And he's just an average guy like you and I. And then praying and the, um, the heavens open up. And water comes from the, from, from the sky. That can be you and I. That can be our church. So over the next little while, we're going to be looking a little bit a little closer at prayer in our lives and as a church and so forth. And then in, in, in about a month, uh, May 14th, we're going to challenge you all, as, as many as you can, to come and be here together. And we're going to pray together each week. Now prayer is deeper than just praying for um, all our sick, our, when we're sick and things like that. I heard one, one pastor call that an organ recital. So all we talk about is such and such as liver's not working, such and such as heart's not working, right? All the organs, you know? So it's just like we're, we're, just, we're just bringing all, it's like an organ recital of, of what, what's our, what our problems are. But prayer is so much deeper than that. I want us as a church to be so tightly connected to who God is. I want us to be so connected that when he, He's at work around us, we see it and we are active following what He's doing. Experiencing who he is. 
And that's what our challenge is going to be over the next few weeks. And I pray that as we do this, that you'll be seeking God and also and just trying to see how He's directing you and how He wants to walk with you over this next few weeks. And over the over lifetime, really. And I thank you for this opportunity this morning to share with you how I believe God can work in your life. Trust Him. Talk to Him. He's a person. Do you realize that in, 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 the, in God's Word, that over 300 times it talks about prayer, or refers to prayer, in the Old Testament and New Testament? In the New Old Testament, it only talks like 38 times about preaching. In the, in the New Testament, or 65, roughly 65 times it talks about preaching. In the Old Testament, the New Testament, about 138. What's more important? What did Jesus, did Jesus ever hear Jesus preaching on, or talk about, or about preaching? Or those kinds of things? No, he, taught, he spent six, time, six times he spent, sat down with his disciples and those around to talk about prayer. How important it is to pray. How important it is to stay connected to our Father. So that's what our challenge will be over the next little while. Is to see how we can grow in that relationship. Let's pray again. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together and to pray. Lord, I, we want to seek your kingdom first. We want, to, we want to seek you. We want to trust you. We want to come to you and know better how you relate to us and how we can relate to you. Lord, I pray that you, we would just take this challenge and to grow and get closer to in a relationship with you. And we pray for these things in your son's precious name. Amen. I just want to read a little um, poem that I found this week called A Soldier's Prayer. It's talking about prayer and it says, I asked God for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for help that I might do great things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness. I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing that I asked for, but everything I hoped for. Almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered. I am among all men most richly blessed. Prayer might not give you everything that you ask for. But it will bless your life completely as you build a relationship with Christ. I hope that that's what you really have your desire as a church and as individuals.